Hey everyone, Mark here. I am at my studio, the Action Figure Torium. That's what you see behind me. And today I'm going to be doing an episode of Design Build Paint. That is my uh, customization show that I sometimes do where I uh, go through the details of how I kit bash and mod action figures and toys to get them ready for um, a bit of filming. And in this episode, I'm going to go through my 12 inch, 1 6 scale kit bashed Madman Mike Allred comic book character that I made. So um, if you're a fan of Madman, and I hope you are, and if you're not, you should be by the end of this video, then you're going to want to stick around. All right, so who is uh, Madman, you're probably asking. Well, Madman is a um, character created by comic book artist and writer Mike Allred, who uh, sort of, like a lot of these 90s inspired indie comic guys, sort of was kind of, um, you know, much like um, Brian Polito's uh, Lady Death was kind of a, a cool sort of just throwaway character that they came up with and then realized that they had some magic there and that it was actually going to be somebody who's going to be pretty cool, that they could write an interesting character around, a great looking character that can make a lot of great looking um, uh, content for. And this happens to be the guy. This is one of the um, characters that I absolutely fell in love with in the 90s that I got turned on to. Uh, by my friend Ronald Bronstein, who um, at the time was an NYU film student and he worked at a comic book shop and he showed me this comic book and I immediately picked it up and loved it. Now, I happen to have a six inch figure that I purchased used off the eBay. There are a couple other Madman action figures out there. There is, I believe, I think it's an, an eight inch guy that they made and also recently, there is a, another edition that is five inch that uh, you can pre-order for right now. Um, I will uh, dig up and put in the uh, description where you can find that guy because um, I, think, I think you guys should get one. That's basically what it comes down to. So I wanted to do a um, 12 inch version of this guy, which I'm pretty sure does not currently exist. And so I thought maybe I could um, inexpensively and quickly kit bash something together, uh, which I was able to do. Um, I came out with this guy. Now, in the uh, shot there, you can see uh, the different paints that I use. That's just to show you what uh, what got me across the finish line. And I thought I would just go through a step by step um, of how I uh, how I made this guy work. Um, Current angle looks a little weird with the eye. Something that uh, fixed just by uh, turning the head a little bit. So how I made this guy comes down to basically two different parts, the head and the body. Now to do a um, body for a 12 inch figure, what you're gonna have to do is you need like a, kind of a generic GI Joe body but you're gonna need a white one-piece suit to make a madman character. And, um, and if you look at this drawing here of him, and there's a lot that you can investigate as far as um, the overall look, you notice that he draws him with it being kind of skin tight and that you can see muscles, um, you can see like the legs and everything, and yet, and yet it has a certain sort of looseness to it, like he's wearing long underwear and that's because um, I feel that the character himself who his real name is Frank Einstein kind of like Frankenstein but you know, we don't want to just come out and call him Frankenstein Frank Einstein and um, he's kind of a, a, a self-assuming superhero that is he just becomes a superhero out of the need to become a superhero and so whatever seems to be around him is what made his costume and I get the feeling that he just happened to have some type of access to like a white one-piece suit of some type of long underwear and um, and just made it sort of his outfit and added some some you know some jack boots and a couple of blue gloves you know like he raided a janitor closet or something 
So you really need to get the white suit, but it doesn't have to be um, skin tight, nor does it have to be baggy. It's kind of both of those at once. It's real interesting. I, I really love the way he does, the um, way Mike Allred does this character. So once you get a one piece suit, at this point, all you need is, is blue hands. Uh, gloves would be better, but, but just blue hands and some type of um, some type of black boots. So let's go through how I uh, how I cranked out the um, uh, the body for this guy. I started with uh, this figure here. This is actually an example of it. I didn't bother to take a picture of my guy before I used him. It started off as a, um, a Power Ranger, the Black Power Ranger, even though he's not African American. Um, the, all the Power Rangers just have a color, kind of like the Reservoir Dogs. And so this is the guy who comes in the black outfit. Now, I was looking on eBay for one piece, one six scale suits, um, coveralls, jumpsuits, flight suits, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I decided, well, this is going to be a prototype. This is going to be kind of garage punk, this first one. This is just really more of a, a concept. And I figured that I could take some, uh, some white spray paint and any character I have, if I have a suit, we can just paint it white. You know, it, it'll, it'll ruin it, to, you know, as far as, uh, as far as the texture goes and whatnot. But that's okay, because this is just a concept only. When we do a 2.0 Madman, we're going to sit down and we're going to suss out the best possibilities for this. So I started with this suit, actually. And um, similarly, uh, my guy had the, um, you can see here, uh, there's like the logo on the suit was ripped off. My logo was ripped off as well. Also, my guy, because um, I got him at the Goodwill Bins, which is by weight. So I paid maybe like 40 cents or less for this guy. My guy's face was scuffed up. There were some other scuffs on it. The suit itself was was pretty badly torn up. Um, I ended up taking off this um, uh, this gold band here. It's just sewn on. I uh, I unstitched it and ripped it off, whatnot. So I ended up just painting the whole thing white with spray paint, front and back, mainly the front. It didn't hit the back as much, and. Um, and uh, took the hands off and just painted them blue with some, uh, some blue paint that I had. Uh, left the bottom half uh, black, right? Left the shoes uh, black so that they could act as boots. But the whole thing I just painted white. And then afterwards, I went into Photoshop and just, you know, with the size of the chest, you know, how big it was, I went and I found an example of the Madman exclamation bolt, and I just printed one out and um, used an X-Acto knife. I just made my own stencil, okay? Because, you know, when you're doing garage punk kit bashing, stencils is kind of a cool way to go. There's a couple other ways. I'm going to talk about at the end of the video what 2.0 Madman action figure at 12 inches would entail. But for now, all we did is we just took a Power Ranger, spray painted his suit white, and then uh, put a stencil on and using this leftover holiday red spray paint that I found in a uh, bag of uh, cans of paint in a warehouse, um, I just basically sp spray stenciled on the bolt. And, um, you know, as far as like uh, you know, kit bashing goes, seems to work, uh, work pretty good. It uh, wasn't exactly the straightest when I put it on, it's the top is good. It kind of wandered a little bit, but um, again, in 2.0, that all gets taken care of. There's the uh, there's the red paint there, and next to it is the rust oleum, which is the white I used on this guy. Um, and so that's basically it. You just have a white suit, red exclamation bolt, blue hands, uh, black boots, and you've got a madman body. So getting back now to um, to doing the head. Uh, the head is a little bit different. To really do a madman uh, face and head, it's really about getting the right kind of hair. Uh, it's a, a type of hair that sort of uh, comes up the top and it's sort of parted down the middle and, um, and is short. So, you know, it's just kind of like, um, like a regressed version of like Robert Smith from The Cure kind of thing. It's, it's sort of that. Maybe it's kind of an 80s sort of goth new wave sort of look or something. Now the character itself uh, in the comic books, he, the one piece suit actually 
the uh, fabric goes up over the head and up to his eyes, but it's always skin tight, okay? So it's not like this loose baggy thing. So to do a figure like that, you're gonna have to basically take like a some type of a G.I. Joe type guy head um, and you're gonna have to just paint the face white and then, um, you know, approach it like that. So for me, uh, in doing this, I ended up uh, picking a, uh, a, a Max Steel head. Max Steel came out in the um, mid to late 90s. I think he's an action figure that, um, I don't know exactly what the circulation was. I get the feeling that, that this is something that was really more uh, marketed and sold in Mexico. I, I could be wrong about that. I, I guess I could do a little bit more um, investigation on these, uh, these backgrounds of these action figures that I talk about. But I think you know what I'm talking about when you see the hair here, you're like, okay, this is something that will work. So what we did is, um, you know, just hit this guy with primer. And again, if you're wondering how you paint onto uh, the soft, flexible, mushy kind of plastic, uh, most people know that when you try to primer it, the paint never dries. It's always perpetually sticky and gooey. And so the trick to that is, the secret is, the Rust-Oleum plastic primer, specifically the can that with the green logo, right, on the front, and has a picture of the chair that is half brown, half white. That is the stuff that sticks to this. Now, the key to that is let it dry, let it dry, let it dry. After you paint it, cure it in the sun, give it 24 hours, give it 48 hours, letting it dry is key. Once it's dry, you can paint over it. So what I opted to do was I painted this guy and then I went back with my paints and I did his hair. I had some kind of earth brown um, that I mixed in with some black to make it a darker brown. Then I had some, uh, I had a wash for flesh, a flesh wash. So it's kind of a, uh, kind of a dark peach. And I use that inside to kind of like highlights and um, you can't see it that great. I really should have went a bit more ham with it, but uh, it did, it did work out. Maybe I can uh, show you guys a little bit of, uh, of just like the top of the head. Um, in the back, sort of how far around I went with it. You can see that it's, um, you know, I just did the top and I left the left it white to, to make it look like he's wearing sort of that smock. Okay, and then what you have to do next is um, uh, you just have to uh, take like a, um, a fine, uh, you know, black Sharpie and you just color around the eyes. You leave the eyes white, but you put black around them and a little bit of a little bit of black on the lips. You can make the lips either entirely black or you can leave a line, of, you know, etc. Now the problem with this Max Steel guy and why this is perfect for my Garage Punk kit bash version, but I'm gonna have to go through some mods if he's gonna make it to round two, right? Is that uh, the, the he's not really doing much of an expression. He's, he's kind of lame, and um, and that's okay because I just wanted to see how this this thing would come out, how this thing would function. And, uh, and so I gave him the black lips, again, the black around the eyes. I did kind of a terrible job. I'm sort of just beginning to start doing, um, to repaint doll faces. I've got some soft pastels. I've got some watercolored um, pencils. I've got the Mr. Hobby, Mr. Clear uh, acrylic spray finish, which is useful for all this. But I'm just sort of beginning my journey and I haven't done my 10,000 hours. So. Ultimately, I would love to take another crack at this guy at redoing the eyes and doing the mouth. I did kind of a terrible job, but I got got it done and um, and it looks okay. Uh, I'm thinking I would have to paint it a few more times before I really nail it, but that's okay. It's all about getting it right later on. Uh, and so this is my uh, is my basic um, my basic 1.0 uh, sort of. Uh, madman character and um and he's ultimately a lot of fun you can see my six inch guy who's next to him there looking up at him to give you uh an idea of sort of you know kind of how close i got and from a distance you can see it's it's not too bad when you get close up yeah the, the face looks kind of hanky and weird but then again the frank einstein character is that um last thing i need to add is that the character has a uh 
um, he has a little sort of uh, blue uh, lightning bolt kind of at the top of his head. And so you just take the same blue paint that I used on the, uh, on the gloves, right? Just take a little toothpick and you just in there and it ooh la la comes out perfect. So uh, that is my, um, my Madman 1.0 garage punk kit bashed version. Um, am I really honoring the character? I'm not quite there yet. I will do a better version and what I think that that entails is I think I should get a much cleaner one piece um, jumpsuit and it could be the uh, nylon stretchy skin tight one. It could be sort of a kind of a jumpsuit, sort of like a, a pilot suit or something in white that um, I wouldn't spray paint at this time. I would probably uh, bleach it or something, you know, do that sort of thing. But you can see that like a better suit and then this time instead of using the stencil to, um, to make the exclamation bolt, I think what I'm going to do is, is with the same um, size pattern, which, you know, uh, it turned out turned out pretty good, but I think I'm going to make it cloth and I think I'm going to hand sew it. And I think that that's going to be more in line with the madman character, a sort of like a guy who would hand make his own, his own superhero costume. So he goes out and, uh, and, uh, and does all the, um, all the quintessential, um, stuff that one does when you're uh, a hero like madman. Um, the other thing is I'm going to um, try and find a better uh, a better head sculpt for him. Either we take uh, the same or, I mean at this point probably the same, um, or a different Max Steel because the hair is, pr you know, it's pretty good, but it's got this one sort of extra piece that kind of prevents it from being, you know, that. And so maybe if we remove that and uh, sort of, you know, paint over where it was and, um, and give him a bigger forehead and remove a little bit of the hair. And maybe with like a heat gun or something, maybe we mm, do something with the mouth, give him an expression, either down or up or anything. I don't know, really, because the Max Steel guy is kind of lacking in all that. And so the 2.0 version, we're going to have a better suit, we're going to have a better logo, and we're going to have a little better expression and hair. And that's going to make this guy ooh la la. So, that is uh, the uh, paint and um, uh, mod kit bash project for this week. Uh, I have more of these coming up. I have a um, I have a taco truck I'm working on for Taco D2, which is a um, a uh, build a droid that I uh, picked up used that somebody made, where they put a sombrero on him and then they spelled out Taco D2 on the little you know the stickers they give you for the name. And I figured Taco D2 should have, um, you know, he, he could be like a droid who has his own taco truck. So we're modding an existing ice cream truck into Taco D2's taco truck. We're going to be um, have that ready. I'm going to show you all the ins and outs of that. Um, plenty of other great uh, mods. There is a, a little um, Punisher car I made for a Minimates Punisher. That's pretty cool. We're going to show you how I did that and um, a few other sort of um, cool paint jobs as well, including some Vitruvian hacks. So if you like this sort of stuff, if you're the kind of person who says, yeah, I like when people take toys and repaint and kit bash and make something new, then you should definitely subscribe to the channel. And if you're the kind of person who likes action figure photography, then you should come find Action Figure Torium on Instagram where I deliver um, usually a daily pick um, taken right here of one of the many hundreds, if not thousands of random weird toys and action figures, vehicles and play sets I have. And, uh, and you know, just sort of slowly dribble them out into the universe for people to, uh, to discover and enjoy. Hey, look, here's a, uh, here's a madman pick right there. So um, with that, thanks everybody if you made it to this uh, far in the video. I uh, thank you guys all for uh, supporting me and uh, following along, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.